Good evening and welcome to the Minions of the Zoo Saturday edition. I'm your host and keeper of the Harry Channel. And with me tonight are Minions Dr. Functional. Yo. Serenity Star 13. Hello. Sora Luna. Hi. And Skeptalk. Hi, everybody. So, Serenity, when you were trying to get a screen name, was 12 already taken? Like 1 through 12 and so you just landed on 13? No, it's called 13 was my lucky number before that bitch Taylor Swift's lucky number, so it's mine, damn it. Oh, is, <laughs> is 13 Taylor Swift's lucky number? Yes. Oh, of on. course it fucking is the pretentious bitch. <laughs> Wow. I feel like there's so much that I just don't know, and I'm afraid to even ask. Oh, she did an entire, like, tour. This is before this. Yeah. Um, But she did an entire tour where she had the number 13 written on the back of her hand. Again, why? Oh, Satan much. <laughs> I'm well, confused. This is the, it, it was just, that's her lucky number. It's my lucky number because it's a inside joke well not really that much Got inside it. joke with my mom um because she was in labor for 13 hours and i was born at 113 13 so that's the joke <laughs> okay got it 13 mockingbird lane was the address of whom <laughs> who lived at 13 13 mockingbird lane i have no idea google it oh boy here we go we <laughs> yeah use the google machine so, um, Scap. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, just, uh, we have, uh, you know, you, re you remember about a week ago, I was saying that my life had quieted down. That I had no more driving duties or not near, near as many things mm -hmm. to, to do with the grandkid. Well, I've just suddenly been socked with all, all kinds of things. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fun. very, it's a busy, <laughs> yes, it's a busy time again. And uh, 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 but the good news is the, you know, the garden goes into a mode where all you do is go out and kind of, you know, look at it and admire its wonder as it as it comes along. Make sure the, the peas kind of we, we put up chicken wire so that the peas would grow into it, you know, like a vine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's uh, we did a much more organized job this year with it than we ever have before that's a that's a good looking uh uh garden it's the best looking garden most organized cleanest garden we've ever done we really have come up the learning curve it is kind of a cool thing i don't have any jokes or anything to start the show it's just kind of a no. fun time out in the out in the yard uh here in retirementville you know i i've been really tempted to get one of those uh blowtorch type things sort of flamethrower things for weed control and i can imagine yeah. that at <laughs> At the end of the season, when you've got this chicken wire that you can clearly reuse, that's just got dead peas attached to it, letting right. those dry out and then just hitting them with one of those would not be would be pretty satisfying, actually. Yeah. Be like your own little Burning Man. Yeah, it's, it it would be at that. It's it's a lot of handling. Oh, that, that chicken wire you got to put on the heavy duty gloves because yep. it just sticks the shit out of you, and uh, you have to. Uh, you don't. You want to handle it as little as uh, uh, possible. In in point of fact, those vines they get so dry. You just touch them, they fall apart out of the thing. You know, it, it would be fun to burn them out, but just because I'm a guy, <laughs> it's 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 easy enough just to make those things out. That we have the no peas just fall apart. We have an electric weed burner that we use to do that. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That, we, we're not we're not that we're not a, we're, we're not anywhere near as advanced as serenity serenity actually works as a true farm we have a large garden that's all well nothing wrong it, with it, a large it, garden yeah, it's lots yeah there's of nothing wrong it i i just it, I you know if I, if I if i if i could dig a well here i'm sorry serenity i'll, I'll, oh, no, I'll shut up after uh, if if i could dig, dig a well here and put in solar and we're looking at, at some options here we really will be set what it well, it's one of those if things we have we water and energy we're just we're done yeah well it's like what you were talking about like once the garden gets going yep it's always funny watching um because there's the homesteading crap on social media and i don't yep. have a problem with homesteading i have a problem with the people who portray homesteading because they either portray it as the 
most terrible, hardest thing could never, ever do, or they portray it as too easy. And mm-hmm. it's one of those things yeah. where it's kind of like, one, it depends on where you live. Yeah. Where I live, it's a little bit easier because I don't have to water that much compared to you because of... Have you got water on, on your property? Uh, we have, have water Have you on got a property. well? Yeah. Uh, there's it's actually... Cool. It's big enough. We have two... There's technically two wells, but we don't tap into one of them. Um, but it's still... It's one of those things where it's kind of like, once you get to a point with a garden, even during the year or in process, once it mm-hmm. starts rolling, you're good. Like, mm-hmm. you're, you're abs- I know what you mean. Yeah. It's like, if you've done it right... If you're mm-hmm. an idiot, if you're a city, if you're a city born idiot who doesn't know what they're doing and gets all their information off social media, mm-hmm. you're going to F it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have two, two you're, wells, you're, you're not, you're not wrong. There's, 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 anyway, get the, get the wells to think that they're in competition with each other. Just let them know that one of them's going to get filled in and <laughs> just who wants to survive. Yeah. Aqua tapping now. Yeah. Who wants to survive? Reality TV survivor. You seem a little sluggish today for a well that wants to not be filled in. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of the reason why we keep both of them intact is because my grandfather was terrified that we would go through a terrible drought like what's going out west. Mm-hmm. So he's like, no, we're going to keep one of them sealed in case anything goes sideways. Not sealed, sealed, but we're going to keep it mostly turned off, but access to in case anything goes sideways because <laughs> it's the deeper well. Because we have one that's kind of mid-level, and then we have one that goes even deeper that my grandfather thinks is an underwater river, uh, underground river, but mm. we're never sure. I, I don't think you've ever ridden a motorcycle, Serenity, or no. maybe I'm just assuming. I'm terrified. Okay, I'm so terrified. old old school motorcycles do not have fuel gauges. Um, what they have <laughs> is they have two fuel tanks. They have a regular mm-hmm. one, and then like a, you're you've run out of gas while you're still moving. Reach down. <laughs> Right. D- down by your left calf, left calf. and then you turn right. like a little switch and it'll switch over to the uh, the backup fuel tank and that's how you know you need to go get fuel nice that's how your wells kind of remind me you know it's like you can it's, it's, also bang on the side of the tank mm-hmm. and I could tell from the sound how much gas I had some that percussive maintenance oh, like yeah. how echoey it is <laughs> yes exactly it's <laughs> like finding if a it's, stud if it's empty it goes clang 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 if it, if, if it has mm-hmm enough gas in it you know like ha- half a tank goes clunk 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 yep man this is really turning into an episode of seinfeld it's amazing there's <laughs> <It's a, laughs> a bunch of people talking about nothing <laughs> so it's sorry i'm fun. sorry I, have, oh you're I do not that your a lot. fault skip stop it I, I think this is i think it's called people having a conversation oh yeah, yeah. harry yeah i know <laughs> i mean i brought you all here to have a conversation so but you know who's not conversating? Functional. He's all by himself over on the left side of the, the list of people. Hi, Functional. Speaking of nothing. Speaking of nothing, would you, do you have something you'd like to share with the class? Uh, dude, it's, it's, it's been just a crazy, crazy, crazy week. Had, had a little bit of drama. Uh, nothing important. Nothing, you know... In, in the personal or, or professional or anything life like that, it's it's a hobby thing. It's kind of in the grand scheme of things, it's completely inconsequential. But it's it's still like people trying to make drama that I just I'm so I'm like a duck. The drama just like comes just falls right hey, off hey, my shoulders, and I hey, hey. and I just don't even care. So mm-hmm. I move past it. But it was the night before my birthday. I just turned 44. Yay! Yay. And um, Yay. so that was that was the thing and. The, the weather's been crazy. And then, oh my God, after five long years, I've returned to Twitter. And uh, I was saying, I was saying to Ru, earlier to uh, Harry before the show, like, yeah, it's been five years. Back then, it was just constantly getting fed crap, and I didn't want to see it. And it just kept showing up at anyway, kind of like how other social media platforms face. Um, have, have operated and it's like I don't, I don't want this crap and no matter how many times I'll block feminist pages or trans pages or whatever like they still like enter my feed and it's like block they block and I, I, and, and I felt that that was kind of the same thing that was happening on Twitter before the dark days and then when the God Emperor showed up it, it feels different now honestly objectively like it kind of does feel different I'm getting People in an algorithm connected to other people I'm ta- I, I talk to 
So, yes, if I'm friends with Serenity, I'm going to get her friends as well who post. But I also get things as ostensibly that her and her friends are talking about in my feed. Like, it might not be directly, but if they mention something like, oh, XYZ happened and, and that was crazy and blah, 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 I'll get something just completely out of the blue in a recommended setting uh, 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 page that is like, ow, oh, wow, that's, that's actually something that might interest me, at least on the surface. You know, it, it might not, it might be whatever, but it, it at least is, seems like it's a lot more intuitive to the stuff I'm actually engaging with, the stuff I'm actually personally talking about and posting about. So, eh, you know, it's okay. Yeah. I still hate Twitter. Yeah. I still like trolled the shit out of people. It's great. Um, but other than that, eh. Understood. Um, I want to do a quick follow-up. I haven't actually, let's see, who have I not formally talked to? Uh, formally. Sora. Sora. I haven't talked yeah. to Sora yet. So we're, I'm going to trigger Serenity in a moment. But before that, do it. hi, Sora. Do, speak formally. Hi. I want to hear Elizabethan <laughs> speech. That doesn't necessarily mean formal. But anything <clears throat> anything new and exciting in the land of uh, trees? Well, uh, found out that Technically, we may be able to see partial eclipse, like a Ooh. little smidge and smidge and itty bitty boo. Yeah. At around 11 a.m. on Monday. However, <laughs> the beautiful, beautiful dark rain clouds <laughs> that, <laughs> that I told everyone we're going to have because it's a celestial event is going to most likely obscure any sort of vision. So that's fun. Joy. <laughs> Everybody say hello to Chaos Archives. Hi. Hello. Bye, Chaos Archives. Hey, Chaos. I think YouTube absolutely hates us. That we have, <laughs> it's basically you, Chaos, and us. That's 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 all that's here right now. I think we'll probably yeah, get more people showing up later, which will be good. And I, probably. it gave me a little bit of a hiccup when I tried to reload the page, refresh the page. Yeah, it hates us. Well, me. <laughs> So, it remembers uh, from a couple weeks ago when uh, you tried to run copyright stuff. Mm -hmm. Bad yes. Harry. Yeah, we're Bad on double Harry. secret probation. Yep. It, ha it has less people watching yeah. than are on the show right now. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I threw up in front of Dean, Dean Werner. <laughs> no, hey, Flatter, you threw up on Dean Werner. <laughs> Hi, assassin. <laughs> Animal House was a pretty damn good movie. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember who the director was uh, for that. Landis? Was John Landis the director for yeah. Animal House? I think he was. Damn, yes. he, he's a damn fine filmmaker. He really is. They, they used to show um, the making of, back when VH1 was worth something, they used to show the making of Animal House on VH1. I remember watching it a few times. It was hilarious. Back when you could actually make funny movies, Jokes. you were... You could make jokes, yeah. Simply put, like Trading Places, Blues Brothers, Animal yep. House, coming to America, coming to America. You could never make. You could. You couldn't make. It would be fantastic, but you, you could couldn't never have that make script. That movie now. You couldn't have that script. They would. They would laugh at you and throw you out of out of Hollywood. They'd be like, yep. "What are you? Are three amigos? Are you? Are you? What? Racist? <laughs> Revenge would, of the Nerds? Would, Think how problematic that was." But those those movies have been some of the most greatest of of, of the comedic recent uh, films here. China would object to old Yeller. <laughs> <laughs> well, they already don't like oh, uh, I, I, Winnie the Pooh, so. Oh, I I, yeah. I, I still remember the um, behind the scenes, like you know the, the golden the, bear from Animal House, the scene where they get down on the ground and do the fish mm. or the worm or what is it when they, when it's at the dance and they're doing the toga party. Yeah. Um, apparently that had to be shot at a different time because when they originally went down, the f floor was like six inches of water. <laughs> so they shot them when they went down, but because they had planned to still use it, they made them get into the water because the basement had flooded. I remember all of this stuff. It was great. I wow. loved it. I, I, love watch I love watching making of. Much like I like watching, uh, reading books that are about, that are the novelizations of movies, I love watching making ofs. <laughs> Assassin, it's we're like, not ignoring you. <laughs> Not I even said remotely. Hi, you I jackpot. said hi. Hey, assassin. <laughs> I even said something in chat. I said thank you. Um, yes, so, chaos. Serenity, while I've while I've got your attention, remember uh, I've been jokingly calling you Annie Oakley because you went after the coyotes. Mm -hmm. Well, 
<clears throat> I sort of I've run into coyotes here in Central California, and they usually aren't super robust, at least the ones I've seen. But apparently, this is a thing um, in the the coastal town of Seaside. They've been seeing more and more coyotes sort of showing Aww. up. Now I don't know if that's a picture that they actually took or if it's really just file stuff that the police sent. That's a Chad looking coyote. If I <laughs> saw that, I would be a little bit scared, honestly. And the the thing is, is like West Coast coyotes are smaller than East East Coast coyotes. I think I I declare bullshit on this picture. I think the Seaside Fire Department got some clip art of a coyote from your backyard and is trying to That's pass it I off because th- that is not my experience with coyotes in California. Also, well, like, yeah, Seaside is not coyote country. That's I, heavily well, urbanized now. I mean, you know. Suburban sprawl, but still urban. Well, one would think, except for the fact that they've been seeing increasing numbers of them coming through. Uh, well, says like, animal. Um, yeah, maybe so. Maybe, maybe. It, don't don't, don't doubt the official media scap. Says here, oh, animal control right. says that coyotes well, will yeah. primarily hunt during the night. Yada yada yada. Yeah. Um, but they've been seeing them in seaside to the point where there's an article about them. I, I doubt that it's a huge number. Anywhere we could just lend them you know. uh, Serenity for a weekend, and she could just take care of this oh, for us. You want to see oh, something yeah. terrifying? Sure. This is, now this is this is this is from Wikipedia, but I've seen this before, so I know it's not bullshit. This is the comparison of Western. I'm sharing my screen of West Coast coyotes. Can you give me the? Left. Can you put the link in the private chat? I will do that. Oh, hey, nothing yeah, to see here. There we go. It's just a JPEG. But it's it's the West Coast Coyote skull is on the left, the East Coast Coyote skull is on the right, and it just shows you the difference in just skull shape, because <laughs> it's terrifying, and it un- it makes you understand the reason why. Yeah, it's being difficult. Uh... Oh yeah, I mean for the most part, it's it's different parts of the country, so there's different threats and there's different food well, sources. So the speculation is this. Wow. The speculation is. Well, the speculation is, is that on the East Coast, we used to have, now they're only, I think, in South Carolina, we used to have red wolf packs. The speculation is, is that when the population started to decrease, coyotes and red wolves started to interbreed. So the East Coast Mm. coyotes are more wolf. And uh, West Coast, the speculation is that they bred more with the jackals and that kind of stuff that lived on the West Coast. So they got smaller on the West Coast. And then the Mississippi is kind of the divide. That's why the Krasensteins are so small. There you go. (laughs) All that um, jackal DNA. Hey, jackal will do a lot of things for you. Jackal, jackal, jackal brains. Jackal, jackal. Nice. So anyway, but it's that. Who? I. He. He looks very Chad, but he still looks more like a jackal to me than he does like a wolf. And because of that, I still think that's probably still got some West Coast coyote in him. I think he's got some, some clip art in him, is what I think. I think he's got some he AI might. coyote. It, it, the source claims you, it was the seaside images. fire and police. They the source claims it was fire and police. But who knows where they got it from? Uh, exactly. Yeah, as Scott pointed out, while there may be some coyotes in Seaside, I wouldn't put this near the top of your list of things to worry about in Seaside. I'd still seaside be paranoid. Is not if the I most, know, do, it's not the most know, peaceful place. Do you know? Do you know what the the genus and species name is of the coyote that Serenity is talking about? It's Canis latrans. Mm. <laughs> Can't make this stuff not, up, folks. Not gonna. Not gonna, yeah. Isn't that great? I love that. Yeah. Well, while we're talking about silly things, uh, here's a story about some fish because you all know how I feel about this. Uh, fish out of water story ends with seventy-seven thousand young salmon in the wrong water. So, uh, oh, they crap. they raise these damn things in these fisheries uh, to get the numbers up, and then they they haul them off to the river. Well, there was a little oopsie. And this truck carrying a bunch of these salmon, um, this 53-foot fish tanker truck crashed and rolled. Now, the good news is it crashed and rolled with its ass right by a stream. The bad news is it's the wrong stream. And the salmon will destroy all of the microbiome in that stream. (laughs) Yeah. uh, One, two, how, what the hell happened? What, how did the driver mess up? Or was he in or... It looks like he may have taken that turn too tight, and his and because it's water weight, it went to the back, and then it just yeah. swung him around, and that's oh, what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what it looks like. Died right uh, after that. Oh, and man, and trivia of the day is that a young salmon that's just old enough that it can transition to uh, salt water is called a smolt. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Called smolt. Oh. Yeah, young salmon or smolt. Yeah, well, I mean, it is sort of a, a glass uh, three quarters nice full stuff. thing. I mean, at least they didn't all just die by the side of the road. Only about a quarter of them did. But uh, yeah, That's they're in the wrong up. river, and they predict that a few years from now they'll swim back to this spot. <laughs> yep, they will. Because salmon are not that bright. They are delicious, well, though. I think they've got that weird of. genetic GPS, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of things they do better than you do. Oh, yeah. Poor little things. Yeah, well, a quarter of them were lost on the impact. But I, like, I wonder. Think better than Joe Biden. Sorry. How far away from the intended Same spawning location? spawning instinct. <laughs> how far away from the intended target of the of the repopulation? It's looking. Is it really down. far? Yeah, looking Glass Creek. Mm -hmm. It's up in Oregon. And oh, that's up. I I used to camp up there. That's that's up there uh, north Let's north of the. the yeah. Well, this is Oregon. Is. This is Oregon's oopsie. But yeah. yeah. I mean, first of all, who would think you could put 100 and, 102,000 smolts in a 53-foot truck? But, yeah, that's how many fit in there. I I've, it's I remember the first time as a kid I saw them releasing fish into a body of water, and I'm like, wow, that's a lot of fish. And then I also remember the first time I had trout that hadn't been stocked, you know, that hadn't been fed Purina trout chow at the beginning of its life. Mm -hmm. uh, and... The, the, the fish were smaller, but the flesh was almost more like salmon. It was like red. It wasn't this pale pinky trout taste that like the farmed trout that you find in a lot of supermarkets. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was like dark red. That's my, and that's the, my the flavor is so different between wild trout and stocked trout. Farmed. Absolutely. I think with we, the salmon, by the time it spends a few years at sea, eating plankton and running from killer whales and all the other things it has to do, that it'll probably yeah. taste better. Well, yeah. So, um, Looking Glass Creek mm -hmm. goes north and feeds into, I think, it, into the Snake River. Oh, that's and it. And then, if, and then if they follow the Snake River, they will eventually get to the ocean mm -hmm. um, because the where it connects to the Snake River is in Clarkston, Lewiston. Lewistown. Lewiston? Lewiston. Lewiston. Okay, Lewiston. Lewiston. I was right. Ha-ha. <laughs> So it'd be something interesting to look up in, you know, a couple well, of years when, if they're going to go back to here or if they do find other ways. Because you're talking about Lewiston, is, Idaho, right? Uh, so I think there's a Lewiston. No, Lewiston, uh, Oregon. Oregon. Too. Lewiston, yeah. yeah, there's Oregon. Lewiston, Oregon, too. Yeah. Yeah, they literally have to go all the way to Seattle to get out. But yes, fish navigation Someone aside. Someone throw a map in that water. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that they wrote the property of the property of the fishery or something on them when they were small, so we can actually, yeah. Well, I spent a better part part of four years when not in school working on farms, uh, and in the, those four years, uh, pre predominantly uh, digging and building. Uh, you know, like not not for a company. It was for you know, like air quotes home use for the farm's use local community use uh fish ponds and spawning ponds and all that so it's actually something i know about cool it's interesting because it's, it's very different where you want them to spawn than where you want to keep the adult population and such so made this uh it's like a four chambered think of them as silos in the ground uh next to a river where the the farm was located and basically think of them as cascading from one into the next so that it's easy to just like, basically sometimes you would just use your hands and just chuck one fish, like pick it up from the first pool, throw it into the second pool. Yeah. Interesting. So, um, hmm, before I get in trouble making a joke surrounding the terms that we're using, I'm going to go on to the next thing. Um, I can't remember if it's geodes who keep sending me things about from like the wolf pit, like people cooking super cheap food and sort of, embracing cheapness as a as a aesthetic almost when it comes to food i think it must be geodes must be geodes. Probably geodes. like bologna sushi yeah so have you guys ever been to the 99 cent only store they don't have that did, here. did, did they close all those in uh, uh california well yeah. they're closing all of them in everywhere 
Are they, they really? They've they've decided that uh, the financial <laughs> situation is just not good, and so they're going to close down, and a whole bunch of people who work in these stores are going to lose their jobs. Oh my it's like no. thousands and thousands of people because All there is low no margin places are going to shut. Down. I mean, they could just call it the dollar ninety nine only store, given how much yeah. money is being printed right now. You were going to say something, Sora? Yeah, I, I'm just. It's just sad. So I was thinking, it is. Cause here we have Dollarama, and it's mm -hmm. not really, it's not really, a, it's a dollar store in that everything is at least a dollar, <laughs> but they have stuff well, that are like up to five dollars and stuff like that, depending on what the item is. But five dollars totally a month. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was late 90s, early aughts, and I'll, I'll try to find an article on it. Um, they... Some people got together and filed a suit against these so-called dollar stores that had to increase prices because of inflation and whatever and bad policy, blah, 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 blah. History repeats. Um, but they, they contended. They didn't say it was a dollar. They just said dollar. That means it could be dollars. It could mean dollar ninety nine. Like, And so it, it was a really frivolous lawsuit, but it was really interesting that it, it actually played out here in Ontario. The things well in the UK they have this place Poundland. Pound <laughs> I love Poundland. Because this is totally not the store I would think you was. <laughs> so I'll just head down to Poundland, not to be confused with Pound Town, which is a whole different, <laughs> whole different Pound place. Town. Yes, that's a different. What about place. Pound Nation? Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, um, I'm not sure what this means. You would kind of think that this would be the right time for discount stuff. But uh, they were trying well, to make, to have it not all just be crap, too. So I think that the margins are just not there and that with food prices soaring, that this whole model just doesn't work anymore. I Well, no, I, I disagree. I think it's still uh, at brick and mortar level. I agree. It doesn't work anymore because you can get the same cheap crap from China, mm -hmm. from India, from wherever. I'm not buying discount uh, food from on China, dude. On, <laughs> you certainly can. Amazon. Uh, Alibaba, AliExpress, Wish, like for the <laughs> not most buying part, cheap food from Wish either. <laughs> People do. No, but like, some of them do offer. You can food stuff. wait, wait. You can buy yeah, you can actually. <laughs> Temu, all of them. You can buy. Yeah, <laughs> Wish. I wouldn't eat it. Wish brand. Can. I can't believe it's not I'm peanut not butter. Eating that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chicken. Yeah. I'm can't sure believe it's, it's not asbestos. Al. Maybe the guy's name was Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's I've seen those bands. Before he I'm died of eating, COVID. I'm not eating cheap food from China. Yeah. What they do in those bands. Yeah, well. Oh, okay. Ninety nine cent store doesn't go any further east than Texas. Okay. Well, we we salute you, okay. ninety nine cents only store. We salute you. I, uh, I'm sorry, because you know what? I love those stores. I love I love dollar mm -hmm. stores, ninety nine cent stores. They're they're yeah, fun to awesome. go in. But mean, yep. meanwhile, while something like that is getting run out of business because of the stupid minimum wage, suicidal minimum wage uh, a thing they've decided to institute in California, their aim is to make everyone who lives there somehow dependent on the state and thereby controlled. They really do think that's that's the way to a better life, and they're choosing to conduct uh, that state that way. I'm really worried about California. It's well, going to be hard to yeah. un unscrew that state. Yeah. Breaking update, Elwin just reminded me, because of that lawsuit, the dollar stores like Dollarama and everything had to put on their signage that said, a dollar or more. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. I so think something did come out of the lawsuit, but I mean, it was it, like, nobody's winning there, except for maybe the lawyers. Yeah, I was going to, right. Like, Who wins <laughs> that? Well, it's like um, fam. I think the one, the lawsuit also ended up hitting Family Dollar down here, mm. so Family Dollar had to do it. But yeah, but um, Daiso hasn't started to close any stores yet in California, and Daiso's the Japanese dollar. Oh, I love I love store. Daiso so I, much. Uh, we have uh, we have um oh oh, they renamed oh mo 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 oh oh mo mo something like that <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. We just have Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and Family Dollar down here, and Five Below. That's well, all we got. this is this is sad. I, I feel like I want yeah. to uh, let's just do one palate cleanser. Um, you know, I 
I could be accused of sort of fetishizing Ronald Reagan, but he I keep thinking about him as I see our current group of idiots. And I, I miss having a president who had a sense of humor. So I have another Reagan joke for you. It's short. So uh, just bear with me here. Let's see. Where did it go? Here we go. The farmer that was driving his horse and wagon to town for a load of grain had a head-on collision with an automobile. He was lying there seriously injured and later followed the... Uh, usual legal procedures with the insurance company and all and he was on the stand and a lawyer said to him while you were lying there at the scene of the accident didn't someone come up to you and ask you how you were feeling and didn't you answer that you never felt better in your life what were the circumstances when you gave that answer as to how you felt well he said i was lying there and he said a car came up and a deputy sheriff got out he said my horse was neighing with pain and kicking at two broken legs the deputy sheriff put the gun in his ear and, and put the horse out of his misery. He said, my dog had a broken back and was whining with pain, and he went over, did the same thing, put the, there, and shot him. And then he came over to me and said, now, how are you feeling? <laughs> like, I, like, you can hear the people who've already heard the joke before. Like, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't it matter. It doesn't matter how many times you've heard Good. it. The well, fact is that it's not just a solid joke, but it, it's just like I'll having a president that. who could do that. Yeah, yeah. He can deliver a joke like that. And he doesn't just sort of lapse into some semi-conscious state where he starts muttering to himself about, I, I don't know. I'm, or how his son died in the war suddenly. Yeah, or how he used to drive a train over that bridge with no railroad tracks right, on it. Right. Yeah. And it's going to be <laughs> rebuilt with union labor and American steel. Really? Do you really think that, Mr. President? I don't know if America produces true. enough. Or how we're going to... Yeah. We're going to do the thing with the shoe or something. Yeah. What company, <laughs> what, what company in America is going to produce that steel, Mr. President? Yeah. Do you not know where the steel comes from now? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway. So I've been meaning, I meant to bring this up last time. I, I think this is kind of a funny story. I, I mean, on some weird level, as much as I hate corruption by government officials, this one almost makes me smile a little bit. $50,000 of public money was misused to build secret apartments inside barrier train stations. <laughs> what? A former employee of Caltrain, a mass transit system that connects Silicon Valley with San Francisco, and a former contractor for the transit agency allegedly used public funds to build two small apartments for themselves inside two train stations, authorities said Thursday. <laughs> Fantastic. That is it's almost fantastic. as good as the guy who made an apartment inside of a mall. Yeah. Uh, do you have photos of the of the apartment? Um, I don't think I... we do. Are they uh... like proper apartments with like electricity and water, or are they just like? I don't know. I think mostly it was just that it costs a fortune to live there, and if you're working all the time anyway, I could sort of see. Uh, semi-legitimate reason why you might do something like this. I mean, it's obviously not actually legitimate, Skep, I'm fully aware. But you could yeah. you could rationalize to yourself about, yeah, you know, I'm going to be here anyway, driving back and forth as a hassle, yada, yada, yada. I'm just going to do this for the public good. Mm. <laughs> and then It's the laundry it. archives. That's what it is. It's the laundry archives. Yeah. Good times. $50,000. That's a hint at a book series chat. That's a that's a book. That's a book series. Just, just saying. Good times, <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to bring that up because I thought that was pretty funny compared to the guy who was spending all that money simping for some woman that was too hot for him. Uh, th that was like the homeless funds. This is mm. this is practically tiny abuse, right? Fifty thousand dollars. That'll get you a jail term, but um, in the big scheme of things, this is hardly even government corruption. Like that other simp that uh, 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 yeah, never mind. I lost it. I lost it. It's a brain fart. I'm sorry. I hang my head in shame. Great disorder. So there's a there's a story going around about uh, Dalton or Dalton. Um, you know where Tiffany Henyard is, that they're trying to bring Beetlejuice, uh, Lori Lightfoot in to investigate uh, Henyard's malfeasance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Super Mayor. Yeah, Super Mayor. <laughs> oh, oh, that one just, that one just, <laughs> just dead named her. Man, we live in the best timeline. We really do. I know. This, this, don't tell me this isn't a simulation. This is <laughs> God messing with us. Yeah. Let me see. I'm sorry. I cut somebody off. I don't even remember who. It's mm. all good. Okay. 
I'm sorry if I'm stepping on people. Oh, no, no, I'm on. I'm the offender here. Uh, let's see. I think since since I brought it up. Oh, that might have been me because I think I was trying to say they had. There's actually seven working steel mills in America right now. Now there's steel mills and there's steel mills. Is it well, like is yeah, it like a proper just, steel mill that produces a lot of steel, or is hey, it more of a boutique on, you guys, manufacturer? I did my master's thesis on international steel industry. You're about to get a half an hour of steel. No, no, we're not. Please, <laughs> please, for the love of God, no. I will tell you how the cow eats the cab. No. It doesn't matter how many steel mills are here or even if the steel was mined and made here. There's so concrete? much work that is done to a steel piece before it is ready to be employed in a project like this that most of that value is the add-on value. And that's where you have to work. As long as it's done by union workers, I'm sure Smile and yeah. Joe will. Uh, yeah, union workers okay. over there, over there in China, <laughs> union workers over there in Indonesia. But here's this thing: uh, Tiffany <sighs> Henyard controversy. Dalton looks to hire Lori Lightfoot to investigate Mayor. Please, 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 please make this happen. This this would be fantastic. I guess Lightfoot used to be a federal prosecutor, and yes, and yes. So you know, and like Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. you know, she was a tough, brilliant prosecutor, really blazed the trail in, mm -hmm. in the law, uh, set records of some sort. I think as long as she has access to the to what Henyard's been doing, it won't really be that hard to figure it out, honestly. It's not going to take a uh, She'll forensic accountant to figure out what happened. She will give her a complete pass. She'll say it all. It's good to me. This is big, much ado about nothing. Let's all move on. Let's let's be good to each other, okay? And that'll be it. That's what's but going to happen. That's why this is happening. Who, who gets to assign the person that should that's going to be investigating, like the chief investigator of this? Is it the rest of the city council? The district I would think attorney, the DA. Oh, okay. The well, DA. then yeah, yeah, yeah. because then I totally they, agree with you, Skip. Right. Well, no, the word here, the key word here is hire, okay? Right. Now, the legal apparatus, if it was going after her, can certainly do all sorts of things. They can appoint people. That's certainly true. But if the this, city council wants to hire somebody as an independent, they can do right. whatever they want. They could hire, you know. So they probably will. Yeah. So I think this is, in some ways, maybe a, a play to sort of get the information out there and then hand it over to the people. But Henyard's going to just block it and block it and block it. I, I love yeah. this story. I look forward to hearing more and more about this. This Beetlejuice on Henyard like, action is going to be fantastic. Yes. If, the, the, no matter which way it goes, it's going to be an amazing story. No matter which way it goes, we all win. Well, I mean, yes. as long as you don't live in Dalton. <laughs> I And for once in my life, I want to thank Beetlejuice. Yeah. For making this possible. We needed you both, girls. Love you. Yeah. Love you, babes. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. So I feel like we have to talk about this. I mean, we don't have to do anything, but I feel like we should talk about this uh, if it ever loads. Biden administration, U.S. ban on menthol cigarettes delayed. This keeps <laughs> happening all the time. This weird sort of uh, soft racism in the form of benevolence where people are like, uh, Black people seem to smoke cigarettes too much and they seem to like menthol cigarettes more. So maybe we should just make it hard for them to get menthol cigarettes because some sort of weird savior complex. I mean, am but I missing some angle to this? Yes, Why don't they just but call it's also the EU. <laughs> the it's, EU. It, oh, sorry, Ed. Go ahead. Thank you. It, it, it's, it's also uh, a way to garner more support in certain communities. Mm -hmm. So it's a double soft <laughs> racism. Like, yeah, they want to ban them it, to support proportionately. I think it's somewhere in the in the range of like eighty percent versus twenty percent to, to white smokers who who, who lean towards uh, menthols. I mean, smoking's been been on the decline for a while. So ultimately, it seems like such a small group to be doing anything over. Uh, but then also to turn around and say, oh well, we're just going to stave this off because we know it's going to piss off that small group of very targeted. Uh, a small group of certain types of people 
because we need their votes. And those are the people that we can still probably swing to our side. They're in pure damage control because this is not the first story like this that we've seen, or that at least I've seen. So what were you going to say, Sora? They could have saved all this headache by just saying, oh, uh, EU has a ban on flavored cigarettes because it attracts younger smokers, right? So, like, they got rid of menthols, other flavored cigarettes, et cetera, et cetera. So Is they that their just... stated reason for doing that? I, I believe so, yeah. It's okay. probably to do with that. So Because you can get regular cigarettes, but you can't go... Because um, we weren't able to find menthols here for a very long time, so we were going to buy some for a friend of the family who asked for. And we're like, yeah, sure, no problem. Couldn't find them in Germany, couldn't find them in Romania, and we're like, what the hell? And it's like, yeah. oh yeah, the menthols aren't being sold anymore. They they were banned like a couple years back. Yeah. Could, couldn't you just flavor your own cigarettes fairly easily? Just sort of take like yeah, a sure. pouch, throw some cigarettes in, add a couple drops of menthol, seal it up, That's and then... That's all, you all you'd have to do. Is yeah. yeah. Just... I have a friend who uses orange peel. We, uh, I, I'm a smoker, obviously. Uh, I roll my own tobacco, and uh, a friend of mine who also rolls his own cigarettes, he puts a, a half an orange peel in with his tobacco to give it uh, a citrusy orange flavor when he takes a draw on it. So yeah, you can just do it yourself. It's not that hard. Yeah. I, I just Maybe a little vanilla bean, and hey, maybe I should try that. I just don't want the government to have the power to do any of this. I don't care... If it's a good reason or a bad reason, I just don't want them to have this kind of power. Yeah. It, it I, seems really silly to ban one and not all, you know? I like think they should just leave it alone, honestly. Yeah, if, just if, let if, it be. Aren't they forcing people? To, is it, What's the age to buy cigarettes? Is it 18 or 21 now? Depends on sure it's 19 and it's, eight, it's 18. If you're old it's enough to fight and die in a foreign war for your country, you should be able to smoke however many yeah, cigarettes you want. Yeah, majority should drink. just be a and solid drink. Line. Well, that means you, that means 17, Ari, because with parental consent, you can join the army at 17. Well, then with parental consent, you should the, be able to smoke cigarettes. I guess I I don't have a problem with if that. I, I mean, if I, whatever. If, we I, can, if I, sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say if I had joined the navy directly out of high school instead of going through college. I would have been 17 when I joined. I told you my grandfather lied about his age to join the Navy. He, really? He got... Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. You told me about that. Yeah, he, yeah, stole, yeah. he stole a race car. He crashed it into somebody's porch. <laughs> got hauled in front of a judge. <laughs> like and they do. said, young man, how old are you? Because he was going to yeah. give him the option of joining the military. He said, I, I'm 18, sir. Right. Courtroom enlistment. <laughs> yeah. He was a strapping lad. He was able to pull it off, mostly. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not really sure. I sort of derailed everything there. Um, I I just find this weird nanny state, state stuff to be kind of annoying. I mean, as long as yeah, people well, aren't smoking around me or doing it in a way that harms other people, it's none yeah. of my damn business how many yeah. ho-hos Lizzo eats or how many cigarettes somebody smokes or it's just not my Even not my issue most most of the time the government has very little defensible interest in in regulating or controlling what you choose to insert into your body mm -hmm. also it's Sorry, not 18 can, uh, it's not 18 anymore and hasn't been 18 since 2019 it's 21 years old yeah that's what i thought 21 now mm -hmm. since 2019 when, when did when oh man I think that's kind of ridiculous. On December twentieth, twenty nineteen, the president wrong. signed I'm legislation. Sorry about that. I'm sorry no, about it's the. Well, I mean, it was eighteen for most of our lives for everybody. Yeah, the president signed a legislation amending the uh, Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, raising the federal minimum age for sale of tobacco products from eighteen to twenty one. Uh, the legislation known as T twenty one became effective immediately and is now illegal for a retailer to sell any tobacco product, including cigarettes, cigars, and e-cigarettes, to anyone under the age of twenty one. The new federal minimum age of sales applies to all retail establishments and persons with no exceptions. So you could be a first sergeant in the army and Cannot not smoke. Be old enough to not buy the United States, a pack anyway. of cigarettes. Not That's, the United States. That is Let me I have tell a you question. what, that, that, that doesn't apply on a federal basis all that. That, I, that can't. That, that I, I don't know. Maybe I'm remembering a Navy that doesn't exist anymore. I just think, like, whatever we assign as a community... As a nation, or you know, individual nations, decide, hey, this is the age of majority. 
that should be the age where you know the the kid gloves literally come off. You become an adult. You have every right covered under your your your, your country's laws and are free to, like you said, put ever or consume whatever the frick you want, as long as a there's in available information for informed consent. I didn't agree with how they conducted themselves in the 40s and 50s. You know, nine out of ten doctors recommend cools. You know, like that's that, that's bullshit. That's actually criminal. Um, and <laughs> I, I didn't say which they, 10 doctors. Well, yeah, sure. I, I, I think that, you know, even the smoke, we had a bit, mass smoking ban up here. You, I, I don't know where the rest of the, the, the continent uh, landed on this issue, but you can't smoke inside anywhere at all in Ontario. I believe it's Canada wide. I think it's uh, Canada wide, yeah. And, the, and within even, five meters of a uh, door intake. Yeah. Even though I said, I was of the mind, like, why not just give people the choice? If you want to go to a coffee shop and sit in a coffee shop that's full of cigarette smoke and sit and drink your coffee, read your newspaper, I think you should be allowed to. And the employees, the people who work there, the people who, you know, they they they, they uh, played the violins for, have the choice to work there or at the clean coffee shop. And the market would correct itself. If there wasn't a huge demand for those types of things, they would just disappear. La-di-da, look. The, the problems fix themselves. Well, you're getting into an, an, OSHA, an OSHA sort of thing or occupational health and safety. It's a little harder for that sort of thing. But, but it's if consensual. You, if you have, well... It, it's, you're not... You're, when you you're, you're, into, for, you're getting into a troublesome area. area. You're, you're, you're well aware of that job, your job, uh, digging ditches or working on a farm. You realize... Uh, operating a, a crane building skyscrapers you realize that there are certain levels of danger that are inherent to any of those you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sit there and wag my finger at a coal miner and say don't you know that the coal dust is really harmful to like that just see that's not my place that's their decision now again if if somebody were to come in and say oh co the coal dust is nothing you're fine you're gonna be stronger than ever like that would be something i'd be like whoa 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 that person is lying, and this is this is this is a problem. You should be in, just inform. That's all I'm saying. Well, the people the people who run the coal mines, access. the people who run the coal mines, have to deal with the liability associated with that. If you well, sure. have a restaurant where you make it like a smoking lounge, and the whole thing is just like walking into a Cheech and Chong movie, it's just, <laughs> it's, you know, it's just crazy. Um, you better know what the hell you're doing about liability and your your insurance <laughs> when you set and up something like that. It, it could be troublesome, but there's certainly no reason why you can't just have like a an area set aside for people where they can self service their drinks or whatever, and this could just take them back into the smokers. Yeah, we room. had you can totally a lot do of that. Places here had that before the legislation <sighs> got passed down, and a, and even. Non-smokers were like, yeah, but I mean, they're already, they've already had fully segregated, uh, enclosed uh, uh, sections of coffee shops and, and some restaurants and eateries that were completely detached. They had air filter, uh, air filtration to direct outside, blah, 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 blah. And even still, you know, the government came, came in and said, no, nope, not going to allow it. The government is not your friend. Yeah, uh, no, speak, no. Speaking of which, uh, let's talk about Japanese communists. Oh, sorry, Serenity, yeah. you go first. Uh, as per military.com, okay. as of 2020, it is illegal for soldiers under the age of 21 to buy tobacco products on on-post stores. There's no plans wow, to enforce... Wow, I'm wrong again. It's, there are no plans to enforce a smoking ban for the All underage right, troops. I'll shut up. So, who was, so uh, was, who was president when that happened? God, who was it? 2021. Which? 2020. 2020. I still yep. hate it, but... Uh, 2019 was when it was signed. 2020 was when it went into effect for military. You know, you I could, you could hold, hold on, hold on. You, well, we have to move on to the next thing, but you could yeah. argue a military readiness factor exactly. in that, that as far as the, yeah. the, the armed services thing. But my, my main point was if you're old enough to fight and die for your country, you deserve to have the rights of an adult, generally yeah. speaking. Um, not having like, a bunch of people like who are going to be on submarine duty hooked on cigarettes might be, uh, it might be advantageous not to have that problem. As a for instance, yeah, but sure. you know the, all the things that go along with uh, chronic tobacco use, because there are people that definitely smoke like one cigarette a month. Who cares? 
It just doesn't matter. And then there's people that are drinking, smoking three packs a day. I can see where that might not be good for military readiness. But, but I grew up in the generation it, it, where our parents smoked in the cars with the windows rolled up. So <laughs> what do I know? But it, it, well, I mean, it just it's basically like you can't buy it at the on-post store. But if you buy it off base and you bring it back on base and you're underage... We don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's basically. But the on post store is where you get out, where you don't have to pay all the all the taxes. They'd well, be way cheaper to, to buy on post because none of that state taxes would be applied to the sale. Unless it's that's changed, those... then Serenity's going to come back. No, no, as of twenty twenty two. No, <laughs> as far as I know, it's not. All right, so let's talk about Japanese communists. Um, Ooh, fun. Japanese Communist Party encourages members to report fan service manga to the UN. Manga. <laughs> Why? That's all manga. What? That is all Why? manga. <laughs> Why? The Japanese Communist Party has reportedly created a secret report form <laughs> to spread amongst its members in order to report young adult manga to the United Nations. All so right, many questions. Start, so start many questions. Furry porn. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so what supposedly somebody stumbled around up across this form. Maybe this is all just BS. Maybe it isn't. But just the idea that Japanese communists think that this is a road to what? <laughs> like They're communists, they want to take all the enjoyment away. Because if you take all the enjoyment away, then the workers can actually work. They just want to run life through a deflavorizing machine until it's all just a thin gruel that everybody gets an equal portion of. Yep. Yeah. I hate communists. And Japanese communists might be the worst because they seem even less fun than regular communists. Yeah. yeah. Stupid Japanese communists. <laughs> Jack, <laughs> hi every oh dear God, what is that? <laughs> well, it's like the the Japanese doomsday cult people. Of all the doomsday cult people, they seem to be the biggest assholes. Um, well, the thing is, it, it's kind of fair though, because if anybody's seen the giant sun come to Earth, it's them. And yes, I just made a nuclear joke. Japanese communists, Jesus Christ! And is, is that supposed to be like what is? Is that a? She cooking? That's, that's a that's a ladle. Yeah. Maybe she's ladle. maybe she's pretending she's singing into it because she wants to become an idol or something. I don't know. I have no frame of reference for this. Yeah. This this is stupid. And Japanese that's communists fantastic. are stupid. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, not not much uh, to talk about here. Uh, oh yeah, there. This is a thing that happened on Easter Sunday. Some people. There was like this cash storehouse, this money storage facility. And some people broke in on Easter Day and sold thirty million dollars worth of cash. Holy I mean, this shit. is like this is like the kind of thing that ends up having a movie made about it. I mean, why would you still have that place in L.A.? Like, well, you make a valid point. Robbed. It's like, guys, move it out of L.A. Are you stupid? Move it to a state like Texas or West Virginia. Do not have it in a place like California. I mean, I largely Duh. don't care about this sort of crime but when it gets to the 30 million dollar number then it's like holy crap that's that's like enough oh, that i have to pay entered. attention hey they entered through the roof it, it's california it was probably uh, got through there because of, the, of a leak because god knows california doesn't prepare for any rain because god forbid anybody thinks that one through yeah I'm sorry <laughs> love you harry well this is a great story <laughs> this is a great story i love it um oh, boy. Oh, it's believed to be the tens of the millions. They haven't even counted the shit yet. Yeah. Because they don't have crying. a good enough... What, well, I don't even, I've never even heard of Garda. Who but this, that? this that's just an armored car company. But this, oh, this, is like, this is like proper, legitimate theft. Not this, you know, I'm going into Walgreens with a trash bag and just stealing crap kind of stuff. This is like proper, respectable crime. <laughs> you know, California, <laughs> we, can, we can do it. This is like New Jersey level of crime. This is fantastic. I hope to catch these assholes. I don't like I don't like criminals. All right. So let's see. We got that. We got that. Oh, uh, yeah. We had some earthquakes recently. There was the one in uh, New Jersey of all places. What was it a four point eight? That must have gotten some people's attention because that's enough. You you're likely to feel it even if you're. I mean, that, that's enough to get your attention. That's not a huge earthquake. But, uh, yeah, I had a whole series of them up in uh, parts of California where you normally don't get them. In, in Belden, California, of all places, a uh, place where I used to spend a lot of time when I was a kid uh, gold prospecting with my dad. I was surprised to see that 
it had multiple small earthquakes. But the one in New York must have gotten people's attention. Did did people God just spaz they... out about it? I yes. Mean, I can't imagine Jesus. that they handled it well if they weren't used no. to this sort of thing. No, they didn't. <laughs> It was all over social media. Oh, my God, we had an earthquake. It's like, yes, guys, you have yeah. earthquakes every once in a while. I remember when there was one there a few years ago, even before this. Yeah. Jesus, fuck. If the earthquakes <laughs> all stop, you're going to die because that means that the earth basically died. You, the earthquakes are a sign that the earth is like doing what it's supposed to do. Now, it did cause some damage, which they do. But it's like, guys, if the earthquake wasn't that bad. Your building didn't fall down. Stop it. It's a it's a four point eight. You'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. You'll survive. Get the fuck over it. Yeah. So you ready for the eclipse, Skep? Um, <laughs> Probably very not. much so. Good. Uh, it's going to be uh, overcast and heavy rains and thunderstorms all day. Really? Woo! Yes. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Oh, that that sucks balls. That's not it good. It does. Yeah, but I've got a little viewer already <laughs> built into the shoebox. You know, with the uh, aluminum foil thing and uh, uh, a very careful little dot in the middle. Hmm. Well, let's talk about racism. Uh, Baltimore mayor Woo! faces racist, racist attack after bridge collapse. Um, first of all, I don't see what the mayor of Baltimore has to do with the bridge collapse anyway. Maybe I'm just missing something. Um but this seems awfully convenient that he would suddenly be complaining about this. Because whenever I hear about these sorts of things, there there are all these th just stupid things that people say that aren't really credible threats, and you just sort of ignore them. Um, and then well, what, and then there's what, the graft what racist, that happens. What racist attacks is he facing? Uh, I don't know. I mean, this seems like deflection to me. Yeah, this this this, this sounds like uh, uh, he just wants to cry victim kind of a uh, uh, soft Jesse Smollett play. Some fringe idiots on Twitter said, of course, it's a black guy. A little bit of racial fraud. Yeah, yeah he's pro DEI, whatever. so therefore DEI must have caused the bridge to collapse. Yeah. So therefore reasons? No. Yeah. Even I don't know. He had nothing to do with it. I think thing. it's distasteful to capitalize on uh, tragedy all the damn time. I mean, I don't see how this guy personally is responsible for this but sort of it thing. Gets, it gets eyeballs, and eyeballs means influence, True. and influence means power, and power means money, and more power. Because yeah. past, these people crave. Because past signaling, hey, these six people died on the bridge, that doesn't get a, a lot of longevity in the news cycle, so they need to yeah. keep it. Hey, rele I'm relevant, I'm relevant. Well, this, yeah. this NPR article is not even remotely uh, neutral Fair. in terms. Of, this is <laughs> this is pretty skewed um, in terms of the way they ignoring that public officials are elected, not hired. And Scott won the 2020 mayor's race with a landslide, 70 percent of the vote. The vitriol playing out in right wing spaces highlighted growing tensions stemming from efforts to promote fair hiring and labor practices in workforces and higher education. I feel like they're making a lot Fair. out of not very much here. This, this just seems like opportunism and projection, and I just well, freaking hate it. Well, in the in the article, they state two. two. That's it. It's a Republican gubernatorial candidate in one state and then mm -hmm. a popular account on X. That's it. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's, it, it's just, you know, everybody's milking the victim corollary. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And any any anything that can get you victimhood points that you can trot out there and say, "Look at me, I'm I'm bearing up," and despite these amazing hardships, God, it just makes me sick. It's all pretty terrible. Baltimore deserves it is. deserves what they voted for. Honestly, you're right. I I don't care I about Baltimore, the, but people suck. Pe there are people there. Suck. I know. That I know. My heart. Yeah. Well, people say way worse things about San Francisco <clears throat> about how they want it to just. You know, slide into the ocean and every yeah, and and I try to just ignore stuff like that. So I guess I've been yeah. on the receiving end of so much of that that uh, maybe I'm a little numb when it comes to other people receiving it. Actually, you won't slide off into the ocean. You'll become Japan. Mm -hmm. Then that's, self report. That's actually what will happen. Self report ourselves to the UN for for uh, the Mitchell brothers and O'Farrell Theater. <laughs> finally, finally, open a place and get some decent oh. dolphin. 
Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> even back in the whole Barbary Coast day, San Francisco has always been kind of a racy, no rules, everything goes, yeah. let it all hang out kind of place. Yeah. And um, if it did, if it did end up becoming part of Japan, that would be an uncomfortable marriage. I think so. Yeah, all the Koreans would hate it. Yeah. They didn't it uh, marriage with Tokyo in uh, Big Hero 6, San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> Building bridges. Yeah. <laughs> good good times. Well, anyway, this is dumb. Moving on. Uh, I love that city. It, it was so good when I was there. Yeah, it sure used to be. God, 77, 78. Um, right a patient at, uh, at work. Uh, because he goes in and out of there and he told us apparently they uh, canceled 420 on the hill this year like the official party hmm. oh yeah why uh, I, I asked him like, and he's like oh you know who knows what their their reason is this year but if you think if you think that no one's actually going Behind to throw that. a party and I was oh. like oh I, I believe it it's yeah. like, you don't have to have an official party. Now you're going to have, like, 50 official parties. Yeah, yeah. F's in the chat for the official status of that party. <laughs> so um, <laughs> th this is kind of fun. So, you know, we had a, a big geomagnetic Steve event chat. that happened it, with the sun. Uh, let's, I don't want the audio here. Let's just do that. So they were actually able to, in Iceland, capture pictures of the northern lights over the erupting volcano. But apparently it doesn't want to show this today because um, I hate the BBC. So just imagine a word picture of an Icelandic <laughs> volcano at night with the northern lights showing over it. Ooh, that's so pretty. God damn it. Yeah, it actually was really pretty. If only I could show you the picture right now. Stupid BBC. What's this? Watch farmer kayak through floods to save lamb. Oh, that video they'll show you. Maybe yeah. if you go back. Maybe. He's not saving anything. <laughs> He's not a very yeah. You're not he very just good at this. Kayak? Did he lose his kayak as well? Or did Yeah. Oh wait. Oh, he's trying to get to it. He's not trying to actually like like they're trying to get to the inlet of land that they're stuck on, not This seems remarkably inefficient. Oh, it is. Because that's not how you do that shit. These as people there's a baby. We're going to send Serenity someone, to straighten these people out. As someone who's had to actually save. Also, this kills. level of cinematography is practically world star hip hop. The only thing they're not doing wrong is having it in portrait mode. Screaming. Uh, Idiots. Well, no, I apparently look, that's, not gonna, that's not going to load, so we won't look at that fantastic picture. We'll have to look at some other palette cleanser. Let me see. Technology fail. Um, how about this? A uh, somebody making a pulse jet ice sled. Oh yeah, I want one. Hey Harry. Yeah. Oh yes. What? Oh my gosh. What? <laughs> try that one for the. Image. Oh, I'll I'll try it after no, I, I want the ice do this sled. one. Okay, here's here's the ice sled. This I is like this, this is like crazy Russian pulse jet ice sled. <laughs> I'm turning What's the sound the worst down. Thing that happen? This is awesome. This is what happens when men have a little bit too much free time and friends. <laughs> yes, and a welding kit. Pulse jets are not terribly no hard to make. <laughs> They're the easiest jet in the, in, in the world. This is what the, the brains the... and a friend with no self-preservation. <laughs> <laughs> I would be oh, driving. So I would so be driving that. You could yeah. you could go so much faster than that if you had no sense. Just, just tweak the throttle just a little bit. Anyway, I love that. Good job, that Russia. That looks actually really fun. That looks really fun. I, I like everything about this. Yep. Oh, okay. Let's see. Where shall we go next? We have side chat. Oh, side, side chat. chat. That's right. Range. That's from Geodes. That's not from me. Geodes found. Okay. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah, I saw this. What are we looking at? Oh. Uh, Northern lights shine over erupting volcano in Iceland. Uh -huh. Can you fold? Voila. Yeah. Good job. Look at that. That's so crazy. Yeah, that is that is the things you do not usually see at the same time. No. Thank Fucking you, Geodes. universe. Now it's just a volcano. That's boring. 
That right, looks like hell. Oh wow. That that just cool. looked like hell right there. Get you. I I just when it's that cooling down lava when it's thicker, right? It's like mm -hmm. I just, I just want to put my I just want to put magma. my hands in it. <laughs> yeah. Liquid hot magma. Yeah. yeah. That's how you just lose nice those hands. Warm magma. Sore. It's it's but good it's on like, your skin. You know when you when you know when you like blow out a candle and you start playing yes. with the melted wax, the melted or, or wax. you get like a paraffin treatment, <laughs> right? Yes. Oh my I god, do I, I do that too. Yeah, it's the best. That's it, it, that's <laughs> that's my inner thoughts wanting to do that. So, hey Jack, you want to come over for some steamed hams in Iceland? <laughs> steamed hams? No, my my wife got me doing that. Is that a euphemism? Wax. <laughs> Simpsons <laughs> reference. <laughs> yeah, it's a oh yeah, Aurora Borealis. <laughs> Entirely within your kitchen. Yes. Oh, this Can was actually it? this is actually yeah. sent to me on my phone. Let me see if I can load it here. At this time of day, this year, entirely localized within your kitchen. Yes. Okay. Watch Mount Etna puff smoke rings in rare display. Cool. I can do that. Yeah. Ooh. You're not a mountain. Look at that. Volcanoes are not supposed to make did smoke rings. Did you just rings. misidentify me? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, that's did you just assume my, my... Oh, come on. That was cool. That's my cool. Don't, don't tell me we don't live in a simulation. Yeah. That's, this, God's just messing with us. Like. Code's getting a little too <laughs> complex. <laughs> let's just... let's just Yeah. Yeah, you blow oh, a lot of hot air. The rival aliens are trying to communicate with us. Yeah. Oh, it's the it's the, it says the the lizard people on the inside of yes, the hollow earth. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly, sir. That was pretty awesome. It's, it's the chaos gods amazing. trying to communicate with us. It's it Cthulhu. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's make fun of liberals some more. Um, Green Day adds Marjorie Taylor <laughs> Green lyric at surprise San Francisco concert. Sure. Oh, God, look up Rage. Clapter in the dictionary, and there's going to be a picture of this crap. Green Green there's Gay. I mean, Lord, how yeah. low, how much low hanging fruit can you find, you know, if you're Green Day just making some Marjorie Taylor Greene comment at a concert in San Francisco? Gee, I hope we're not being too edgy. Maybe the crowd in San Francisco won't like this. Yeah, well, it's kind of like the Dixie kidding. Chicks making fun of America when they were out outside of America. This, it, in like, San Francisco, the these yeah. guys are the Dixie Chicks. These are oh, the Dixie Chicks of San Francisco. Oh, I know. Oh. This is just. It's, this is so they, lame. The aging on the track. It's, it's, they're exactly like Rage Against the Machine. It's like Rage for the Machine. You haven't yeah, been exactly, against the machine exactly. your entire career. Rage the position. Machine. The yeah. band's intimate one-off show recalled their days as oh, East intimate. Bay punks. Guess what? Sure. When oh, you yeah. are playing to the majority, you are not you punk, punk anymore. You're no. not even remotely punk. They weren't even punk, punk back yeah. then. They were right. not. not kind of were. I love the fact that Johnny Rotten's a conservative now. <laughs> They were they were grunge wannabes. Yeah, I mean it was it was that kind of fusion of grunge, alternative, and and punk. It was a lot more mainstream for sure. I mean, yeah. Green Day is one of the biggest. But Billy Joe that always always was uh, according to grunge label. Yeah, this opinion. this one yeah. goes out to all you weird mother effing QAnon mother effers out there. He oh, said, Lord. "Wow, so edgy, much wow." Yeah. <laughs> Much wow. Very Much wow. <laughs> okay, for the Cali for the for the um California people. Yeah. Um is I'm gonna butcher the fudge out of this name. Pinole? P I N O L E Valley Pinole. High School. Pinole. 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 Is Pinole. that a is is that a upper crust or a lower crust high uh, area? Lower crust. Yeah. Lower okay. lower crust. So at least so at least one of them is from an actual lower crust area. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that doesn't mean they're not modern day sellouts. Oh, I know, I know. I'm just trying to see what. Because oh. this is just this is just such sellout bullshit. I'm just. Oh, Oakland, not. California. Oh God, yeah. they are. They're <clears> yeah, <throat> because being anti-establishment does not mean you lean towards one of the establishment parties and do. Oh, I know. Do gigs for? What, was it Obama? Oh yeah, they. Oh they. they I mean. Bent that, over that and kiss that ass. So right far quick. removed from being punk at all. Oh yeah. It is the entire antithesis to what punk is. So yeah, fuck them. Yeah. A lot. A lot of. A lot of these bands have shown their 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 true colors. Oh, yeah. Um Blink One Eighty Two, 
uh, 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 whatever, you know, rage, rage for the machine. They've shown their true colors in the last, uh, I mean, uh, immensely through the, the, the coof years, um, but in the last decade or so, just being like, yeah, like, and I'm glad I never had to find out, you know, if people like Lane Staley or, or um, fuck, what's his name? Not Cobain, the other grunge guy. Uh, uh, There's a lot of those. You gotta be slightly shit. more specific than that. Allison uh, Chains. There. I don't. Scott Stapp, whatever. Like, yeah. Like I, I, that was STP. Like I'm so glad that they didn't live as like into this age because I would I would. Those bands were so huge to me. Green Day never was, but like to find out that you're just a empty, vapid shill for the system that you were kind of like making me a little bit more awoken to like eh. uh lane be staley damaging. was the original iconic singer for the grunge band alice in chains staley died yes, of a drug lane overdose staley, in, yeah. oh so it was lane staley it was lane staley I, i'm sorry i wasn't listening i should i, I should oh, no, you're, you're, I, I know that band you're, you're probably well. tired, Scap. It's completely understandable. <laughs> um, but then after Staley's death in 2002, William Duvall and Jerry Cantrell took over as I was thinking of Chris Cornell. I'm oh, sorry. I'm you're sorry. Good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. No, no you he hear said so Lane Staley, and then I was thinking Chris Cornell, and then I said Lane Staley, thinking, give it, <laughs> you know, whatever. I mean... Uh, I knew that okay, you no, knew that I knew that you knew. Right. No, you want to hear something funny? <clears throat> this is Green Day. Um... On September, this shows you how far they've fallen. On September 30th, 2023, Green Day announced was announced as the halftime show for the 110th Grey Cup. For those who do not know what the Grey Cup is, that is the Canadian Football League. <laughs> the Grey Cup. Yep. That does then, not sound fun. Um, and then the following day, they announced that they announced a new website called a name with the name the american dream it's killing me oh god okay we're gonna talk about something else parks and Re <laughs> yeah. we're gonna move on to parks and recreation these people don't deserve any more of our time you need a palate cleanser well i want to know how big that place was this will amuse you california park okay. warns of illegal trails near unexploded grenades now yeah. skip probably knows exactly <laughs> yeah. what i'm talking about excuse me uh, the former <laughs> the former military base fort ord in monterey california well yes near monterey california they used to just yeah. just tear loose, blowing shit up all the time. They'd yeah. get out the big old, the big guns, the mortars, the grenades. They would train like crazy. And they they made it stop being a military base. And part of it's been made into a park. But apparently they felt it necessary to put out an extra warning to people who like to wander off the trails. <laughs> because it turns out there's like a whole bunch of stuff in what used to be Fort Ord that has not been picked up yet. So it says, but recently uh, U.S. Army officials said visitors have built illegal trails and bike jumps west of Barloy Canyon Road. Visitors could be in danger of running into, and I quote, munitions and explosives of concern, including artillery projectiles, <laughs> rockets, hand grenades, practice landmines, Mines. pyrotechnics, bombs, demolition materials, and other items. <laughs> yeah. And, and that was... Uh, you know some <laughs> idiots are going to go out there looking for this shit. That now. was that was their EOD training center too that you know the explosive uh, ordnance demolition. Yep. Uh stuff that yeah, that, <laughs> all that training was at Fort Ord. Yeah. See, no. If ever there was a place to stay on the trails, this would be <laughs> it. I, I would. I would. Yeah. I mean it's it's a beautiful piece of property. It absolutely is. I, but, I've walked Black Horse and, and Bayonet many times. I yeah. love that place. No, it's a, it's a fantastic place. Climate's beautiful. It's kind yeah. of rough terrain. Gets into It gets a little sandy in spots. There's a lot of chaparral. A lot of ice Just, plant. Yeah, a lot, a lot of ice. As you get closer to the ocean, a lot of ice plant. But, um, yeah, if you happen to be in Central California and there's a, an army base that doesn't exist anymore and they make a park, maybe don't go boldly where no man has gone before for a while <laughs> because you might yeah. you might end up running into something that you don't expect all right for real so speaking of parks and recreation uh texas parks and wildlife votes unanimously to swap 43 contested acres to elon musk's spacex for 477 acres a few miles south i have zero problem with this um they're basically giving oh, spacex some room to expand their facility at uh, Boca Chica, 
Absolutely. Uh, and Absolutely in return, they're getting 477 acres of uh, perfectly good land. It, and this isn't like they're giving them shit land. If no. anything, they're giving them upgraded land <laughs> to, yeah. to expand the parks. Yeah, no, I think this is an excellent... Yeah, good trade-off. Yeah, it's perfectly sure. good trade-off. This is it's this is commerce and and uh, uh, you know civic leadership working harmoniously. Yeah, almost like the CEO of SpaceX isn't uh, a, a complete uh, asshat. Idiot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like maybe he's not the big bogeyman that people are like trying to portray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you, how long do you think it will be before he runs for president? Oh God, he can't. Elon? Yeah, he, he doesn't want to be president. Africa? Wasn't he born in South Africa? But that just means Elon? we have to change the constitution. That's all we have to do. Yeah, I don't think he, Elon is too smart to be president. Yeah, yeah, but Pretoria, South Africa. So he yeah. couldn't. He couldn't run even if he wanted to. But could he, he could not be? It. Could he not be? Uh, a part of an administration. Can you can can does is there the same restrictions for VP? Yeah, there's there yeah for VP yes. There's really no upside for him being president. Hmm. You know, well so he he has said some stuff that I side eye. Yeah, he can be it. natural born. Oh no, that's natural born. Yeah, he's not natural born. Vice president. But I mean, even still, like a a a a a uh, you know. I don't know what what you guys would have equivalent there, but like a minister of science and you know, or whatever. They have to, that would be the presidential cabinet, and he'd have to be picked by the president. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, he could be the new Henry Kissinger, or oh even God, even just true. as a <laughs> as a, a source of um, uh, <laughs> like having an open dialogue oh. with the White House to sort of like. Maybe expand his ideas he of be more like advancing a technology to. I don't know. Yeah, I can see him being like a Rasputin. I can see it. And because yeah. each man will have to service ten women it, it's, in the it's, shelter, I, I, I'm, I'm, the I'm women will to have be, to be selected for their attractiveness. Never mind. I'm going to be very libertarian with this. I think he needs to stay the fuck out of politics. Yeah, I, I think he's smart enough. He's probably going to. Period. Insofar as a business person can stay out of politics once they get yeah. to a certain size. But like uh, not, as not, a consultant a, to a, a cabinet, I would be completely on board with that. Well, uh, cabinet like, post. Hey, cool. You're getting you're getting people with ideas and who know how to make things work to advise well, your administration because. It's more like I he mean, knows how to delegate to people who know how to make things work. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he knows he knows how to conduct a symphony, and that's sometimes <laughs> what's lacking in 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 a lot of these elected officials is they're they're all charisma with no chutzpah. Like there's there's no there he's there behind them. No charisma. It, well, I mean, eh, he's got some charisma. He's got that weird mm. nerdy autistic kid kind of mm. charisma that you know some of us find endearing. I love it when he. When he, he turns around and tells Bob Iger and Disney, go fuck yourself. I'm not playing your stupid commie bullshit. Like, that kind of stuff, that that to me, that's charisma. But uh, uh, no, that's, he, he, that's, definitely that's, is, that's he definitely is not as charisma as, say, uh, Trump is. Or, you know, even I deign to say it, but Trudeau was. Um, but the, the, the problem is, again, these people have nobody behind them to fill in the gaps of where their expertise is is next to nothing like i don't i i wouldn't trust for a second that our energy minister knows uh gilbo knows anything about anything he's he's one of the biggest proponents of of, of carbon taxes hunter biden knows a lot about energy he's an internationally yeah, acclaimed right. energy specialist i think just look he at his makes resume. a lot of money. He makes a lot of money doing yeah. that. And they don't hire people like that for no reason. No, sir. That's a big expense for them. Why would you? Yeah. Yeah. No, so he's really added value. So while we're talking about this, let me seamlessly let me seamlessly move us over to uh, one of the articles that's in the thumbnail. Uh, Biden wants space ta wants a space tax on companies like <sighs> SpaceX and Blue Origin that launch in the U.S. And why? Because of course he does. So it says President Biden has flagged commercial space launch companies like SpaceX for aviation excise taxes. The firms currently do not pay the tax, which is tagged to the price of airline tickets. The FAA is already struggling, they're struggling, to keep up with the pace of space launches. 
Uh, Go fuck yourself. Yeah, that's pretty much it, it, my analysis, okay. too. We we all know that's a performative statement, Biden saying this way it can appease the comedy bullshit. Like, the, the idiots... It in, does sound no, like that, yeah. uh, uh, The idiots who spend way too much time on X mm. or on Instagram, just this way they can they can play when he runs for president again. They can play the, yeah, I'm on your side. I'm a socialist commie. And that's yeah. all it is. Because, like, who gives a flying fluffernutter what he... I want them... To, I doubt he can spell taxes, let alone knows what they are. Yeah. Let me let me tell you about the kind of problems you want to have as, as a government. You want to be having problems because you're having difficulties keeping up with the permitting of multi-billion dollar businesses that are being developed in your country. <laughs> it's like, oh no, there are so many commercial space launches that it's taxing the uh, the paperwork capacity of the FAA to keep up. You know, that that is, what of, of all the problems <sighs> to have, that might be, you know, one of the worst. Just one, <laughs> le least defensible uh, problem that Ever. Yeah, just somebody please think of the children. Yeah, just just be happy that that's the problem you have. Mm -hmm. That's like you know Elon forgetting who he's got a date with on a given night. You know he's he's got an embarrassment of riches. It's fine. It's fine. It, it's in it, it. What he's saying is basically all performative. Anything that gets said in the next six months is all performative. Like especially if there's nobody on any political party who actually backs it. The yeah. fact that they have to say Biden said it. It's all performative. It's all it's this way they can slap it on an ad. It's this way they can go, look, he's on your side for president. That's all it is. Yeah, well, American commercial space flight is doing so well that the government's now threatening to tax it. Congratulations, boys. We did it. <laughs> all right. Uh, enough You're of that. Wrong. It's kind of a good sign, but a bad sign. It is a, it is a good sign. It means that things are going well. Well enough yeah. the government now wants a piece of the action. All right. Um, let's see. Which thing will It'd be enrage? a real shame if somebody were to knock <laughs> over one of these fancy rockets of yours. Yeah. yeah, nice little enterprise you got going. That's right. Friend. All right. So let's see. Which thing will annoy you more? Maybe this one. Uh, surprising nobody, courts demand info about people who viewed specific YouTube videos. And I'm gonna oh, go shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Do you know it how much? Nice knowing everybody. Do you know how much stuff I I look at just to sort of research things for the show? Straight to gulag. <laughs> Please face wall. <laughs> um, how compelling, comrade. Now I don't see how this really is any different than uh, or legally should be any different than what they have to do with libraries. The problem is that when they do when they're looking for like who checked out a library book, you know the. Uh, anarchist cookbook from the Roanoke, Virginia library uh, between such and such dates. That's a fairly small number of people. When they do stuff like this, they're casting a huge net because they can. I mean, the technology just allows for it. So the, the, the amount of people that get swept up in these sorts of warrants is, is insane. And are there privacy concerns? Absolutely. You should not be... Uh, Conf de facto convicted or deprived of anything oh. because you happen to have watched a video because it doesn't say right. why you watched it. I mean, no, no, no. The big, the big question is, what is your expectation of privacy vis-a-vis -vis your participation with public, publicly available resources on the internet? Do you have the expectation that you? may interact with those things uh, anonymously until you choose to not be anonymous? Or can you give up that right? Uh, and when can you give up that right? There's a lot of things that have to get worked out uh, in, in figuring out where all the interests lie, where all the arguments are. That's what lawyers do. They, they yeah. just figure that stuff and argue through it. You need Prospero around. She could she could take that to a next the, level. Well, yeah, we could spend two hours you're, talking about this topic easily. Yeah. Your 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 last point there is that it is the law. The in 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 theory, is that how it should work? That you should have an expectation of privacy? 
I'd say yes. I think most of us would say yes. In practice, that doesn't happen because the law has not caught up with technology in the slightest. And it is, honestly, for me, it's terrifying. That's why you got to, like, not be clicking on weird links and whatever because it, something could get back to you. Like, if you're... <clears throat> watching something and it's or, or or click on a link and it sends you to a video and you're like hey whoa 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 i didn't want any of this because it's a, it's a it's a what, what do you call those worms that like um try to anyway malware uh, yeah malware some kind of aggressive uh, yeah and malware. i mean if there's some corn that isn't exactly legal that just shows up and you're like what the fuck is going on it's happened. I've gotten infected by malware. Things were just blowing up and opening up and yeah. had to completely wipe an entire uh, operating system, reinstall everything because it was so invasive. This is how fast can you click dismiss on pop up boxes? <laughs> <laughs> Not fast enough, those, asshole. Going but also to your shit. point, like if you're if you're let's say you're doing a paper on suicide in or just suicide, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then it, get, it gets back to you, or uh, 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 you're doing a, a, a you're, you're trying to learn what happened in Jonestown or at Waco. And then suddenly now you're on a list. Yeah. I feel like we're missing, like, well, okay, I'm, okay, I'm going to blame, I'm going to take the blame. I'm poorly conveying what the key point here is. I am not claiming that there's an absolute right to privacy. That, because that would obviously be foolish. We don't, you don't have it with library books. No. You don't have it with, you know, the sales at B. Dalton. You don't have that's, it anywhere. Did, that, that, why, such that's a thing, why I put it the way that I did. Yeah. What is your expectation? Such a thing, such a thing, does not exist, nor should it exist on the internet. The internet isn't special in that regard. But however, the the problem is that with all of these applications of law to tech, they end up casting a huge net. By the way yes. they make these what requests. What protections does the individual have? Exactly. So what does what protections do people who are just innocent actors, who are bystanders, who get swept up in this surveillance have? Um, you know, we talked about the thousand PO boxes, or sorry, safety deposit boxes that got seized because they thought there might be one or two people there who... Hmm. you know, had were doing something they shouldn't be doing. And in these cases, a thousand is probably a small number. They would literally yeah. be saying, tell us, you know, we think this video is problematic. Tell us everybody who looked at it, and then we'll figure out which ones we're interested in. No. If you're, you know, if you're going after somebody for a reason with warrants as a legitimate law, law enforcement activity, that's one thing. But these requests for information are just far too broad. Yes, but don't you think that the same laws that would require law enforcement to get warrants to, say, get your phone records should be applicable, at least in, in the spirit of the law, uh, to your text messages, your emails, your uh, browser history, your, uh, sorry, sorry, your, your watch history on YouTube? Like, don't you think it should be similar, or is there something well, that says... It, it, it should be the well, here. Here's the issue. Another issue. Why do I? I don't know. I shouldn't be the one explaining all this crap because I'm not very good at explaining stuff. I'm not saying you. I'm using no, the no, no. You, like, I, I know. I know. I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. So, imagine a hypothetical situation. You're you're a bad actor, and you want some kind of information. So you're going to find, like, a video that shows you how to do something to forward those ends. Sure. So you use uh, the tricks that people use to not be found. You use sure. Tor, you use some kind of relay, you use VPN, you use all the tools at your disposal to try to hide it. And of course, you don't log into YouTube. You don't sign in with your Google login. You come in anonymously because you've right. got the, the link from somebody else on the dark web. And you right. try to hide it. So what the government is right. arguing, because right. if you can't steel man somebody else's position, you don't understand it. So I'm steel manning the government position. They right. need all of it so that they can go and combine that information with other resources right. to figure out where the bad people are. Because wouldn't it be a shame if any of the bad people were got away with it, even if we need millions of records about a video's that is an history? Search. But that's what they will tell you, that it's necessary yeah. for reasons. Um, no, it, it's not. It's unreasonable. Uh, as, uh, prima facie on its face 
it is unreasonable. It's yeah, violent. but I mean, are both 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 well, all all three UK, US, Canada? It seems like the law seems to think, and this is why I was asking that question just in generally because I don't understand the why people aren't more on board with this sort of idea or talk about it more of why doesn't that just apply to the, the types of communication that we had before? Like what, what's different to change it now to allow these broad nets to be cast? Like, yeah, no, like, well, what's different is it's um, easy to cast a broad net. First of all, that's well, yeah, why they, and, that's and why they mean, figure what can we get away with? And second of all, like I said, it's the, the fact that it's easier to, excuse me, to hide and they want to get as much data as they can so that they can cross-reference it to other information. Who, who's going to wanna, stop the courts? Yeah. I don't want to sound like an ass, but were either of you gentlemen alive when they started implementing or writing laws for, say, telephone communications? Or is that before even your times? No, that's before even me. Okay. But a lot of the big yeah. stuff came out of the 70s, didn't it, Skep? And we well, were both yeah, alive for that. Communication, communication right, law was going on, you know, at turn of the century. Yeah. Okay, like 1910s, so, you know. 1920s. Uh, even Something I'm going to have to look into because I'd even like even to know. The 19th century. I'd like yeah. to know what the, if, if the situation, you know, they don't, they say, you know, history repeats, but it more rhymes. I want to see if there's sort of like a rhyme between how the laws were started around telecommunications then to what we're dealing with now. Would you oh, like to be are, angry about something else? There are plenty of analogies. Else? Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there are plenty of analogies. I, I'd yeah. imagine so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, here's yeah, something. Yeah. Here's something, something, something else. I haven't read. Here's something else that'll it. make you angry. Okay. Obviously, I'm okay. very passionate about it. Because, uh, why passing the bar exam will no longer be a requirement to become an attorney this. in Washington I State? Yeah. I saw this. Oh my uh, god. This is great. I, I have a I have a future <laughs> career if I want to move down. Yeah. Bar exam so. disproportionately blocks marginalized groups from becoming lawyers. Oh, minimally boy. effective right. for ensuring competency. State sure. task force finds. Um, I think we all know lawyers, um, yeah. at least a few, um, and we know more or less what the process is of becoming a lawyer. Uh, the bar exam is hard, and it's hard mm. for a reason, mm. because lots of people want to become lawyers, because wouldn't it be great, you know, as seen on TV? You're going to love this, because I have a contrary opinion. You get the hot, you get the hot redhead receptionist mm. who ends up, you know, marrying you at the end of the series, and, oh, it's going to yeah. be fantastic. Um yeah. But the, you, the bar you, exam you, is it well, I mean, essentially they're acting as a cartel, right? And so they're they're intentionally limiting the number of lawyers. So it isn't just about quality, it's also about keeping the price up. That's the other reason that they have the bar exam. So I can see where liberalizing it might make some amount of sense. Absolutely, I don't have a problem with that. But to say that it's irrelevant or it's not a good predictor, you have to actually study pretty damn hard to pass the bar exam. And I don't you, think that you, studying is is Unuseful, you do. but it, it but it's just an intellectual screen. That really is all all that it does. It doesn't it doesn't tell you who the good and bad lawyers are going to be. Felix Frankfurter failed the bar, just like Kamala Harris. Which one was the better lawyer? Well, did he only well, fail it once, or did he? <laughs> he only failed it once. You know? Yeah, I mean, unlike yeah. somebody else, possibly. Yeah. Allegedly, did he have to get down on his knees. <laughs> anyway, that was only to my... pray. Rosaries. <sighs> yeah. Bows head with great respect and genuine <laughs> Drink, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, all that talk about where rivers went, I think qualifies as navigation conversation, too. I think you should have drank for that as well. Definitely. Sorry, I, uh, I feel like I've sucked all the wind out of your sails, Skip. I, I get the point what you're trying to make. I mean... It is not the greatest predictor, but it's just sort of, do you have oh, well, the basic I, skill? My, now, I do have an affirmative point to, to make about here. So I think the bar exam should be replaced. I, I think it should be replaced with a couple of different uh, smaller exams that you would take over a longer period of time, probably your first year out of law school. Can I take them online? Huh? No, oh. no. There would be there would be light, and it would be very similar to taking the uh, bar exam, but it would be 
use it it, it, it would be practical factors rather than just memorizing can you look up this law can you argue successfully for the validity of this contract or that or you know whatever whatever mm-hmm. the hell they argue about on those damn exams uh it 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 would uh, force them to think and synthesize legal logic and that's what they would have to demonstrate in order to go and it would probably end up actually being a little harder but it would actually directly test the the skill that it really takes to be a a uh, a good attorney. I would like to see that happen. Yeah. Of course, I'm a racist bastard. Yeah, and and you just want to make it harder. You're part of the problem, Scap. I'm part of the problem. You're part of the problem. So there's there's a there's a there's a cap on how many people can pass the bar exam each year. No, there isn't. Or- Problem is, it it just it's too hard. People. No, I thought I thought Harry said that. It's ridiculous. No, it. Well, they they use it as a way of number of people can take the exam. Well, they use it as a means of restricting the supply of lawyers, and and you could argue that it's about quality, but really they function as a cartel, much the way. it's Becoming an accredited thing. medical school uh, a is a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it yeah. now. I just, I, I didn't... There's some understand. strong parallels between medical stuff and law. Yes. You know, they're both functioning as cartels to, to keep right. the, the prices, to keep the profits up of the people who make it through the and gauntlet. And, of course, they are internally inefficient because all cartels are internally inefficient. Of course. And we all look forward to the day when just AI ends up replacing them. So that's why whenever I see an ad for Legal Zoom, I smile just a little bit. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, let's just go ahead and get this one out of the way. And I could put this off till next week, but I like to talk about the things that are in the thumbnail. Oh, why not? AI companies are running out of internet. Yay. <laughs> so, <laughs> what does this mean? Well, the the models for AI to train them need a ridiculous amount of data. So let's just talk about this one section here. Don't underestimate the amount of data these companies need now and in the future. Epic researcher Shemp tells the Wall Street Journal that OpenAI trained GPT-4 on roughly 12 million tokens, which are words and portions of words broken down in ways that large language models can understand. Shemp believes that GPT-5, OpenAI's next big model, will need 60 to 100 trillion tokens to keep up with the expected growth. That is 45 to 75 trillion words per open AI's account. The kicker, Shemp says, after exhausting all the possible high-quality data available on the internet, you'd still need anywhere from 10 to 20 trillion tokens or even more. The, the upshoot of this is that the new AI models that are coming out need so much data to train them that all of the existing data on the internet that has any quality behind it is not enough to feed these models. That's amazing. <clears throat> well, in a previous um, show, I mentioned this whole sort of Ouroboros thing that was going to happen, where more and more of the internet will be AI-generated content, and then mm-hmm. the AIs ingest their content that they produced, and it ends up actually reducing the set of results. Have you seen what's coming out of these content mills, these historical documentaries that are just suddenly popping up all over the place and they're free. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it really is. Well, I've actually been uh, collecting some of these. I wasn't planning on showing this today, but I've been noticing there's a lot of these ads that show up, these sort of clickbaity ads, and uh, some of them strike me as being a little funny. So how about this one, Skep? $119 $119 a month Jeep Wrangler for people yeah. 55 or older. <laughs> what do you think of that Jeep Wrangler, Skip? <laughs> it looks fine. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. How about That's how about this? How about this Mazda CX30 for seniors? <laughs> there you go. Oh, nice. Talking. Yeah. I would is drive it self-driving? <laughs> it is. Self-driving. Uh, it is. I would, I would love that. Or how about how about this uh, adjustable die, smart bed and drives you right to your plot? Because this is this is totally <laughs> a thing, right? This isn't just some AI That's crap so that got cool. generated. What, I love what the, I would do is I would install this bed in that car. 
Yeah, look above uh, above search now. You can see sort of the AI BS uh, fake text there. <laughs> it's like so. This That's is an ad. Combo. Yeah, this is this is great. Um, okay, <laughs> this one amuses me so much. Ninety nine dollars a month new Kona SUVs. That is sure. a that is an Azetta from the nineteen sixties. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. That is I so not it. a Hyundai Kona. <laughs> hey, if you want to sell me a BMW Azetta, I am all I'm all over that. That that would be a great thing to collect. I would love to own one of those, but I don't have enough money or space. Yeah, please and thank you. Um, <laughs> oh, they're little. They're, they're so cute. Like you can put them in your car. Yeah. You can fold them up. Here we are. Here's another uh, Hyundai Kona for seniors. Yeah, <laughs> only nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Oh, oh, wow. Take two. Take one for my oh. dog. And then there's uh, there's this one. Here's the new 2024 Subaru Forester, Scap. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I need right there. <laughs> That's what I need. <laughs> yeah. I like the fact it's, it's, got got a, my it's got a snorkel so you can forge streams in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I want is a high-profile vehicle with uh, a lot of weight. You know, that's what I want yeah. to do now is Ford Stream. I want to Ford Streams. <laughs> I want to drive a Ford through a stream. And then this one just amused me just because I'm a, I'm an overgrown child. The most bizarre tools you can find at Harbor Freight. <laughs> you will absolutely not find a sextant at Harbor Freight. Is that how do you know? Yeah. You know you do. Yeah, that that <laughs> Well, the AI that generated these ads just said, oh, Harbor Freight, clearly old, old timey vintage navigation tools. That, that's, that's what we're going yeah, to find about, at Harbor no, Freight. No, no, I don't think so. I really don't care that much about AI. And I, I reserve the right to change my mind, but I just don't care. I, Yet. Yeah. I, I know you that makes care. me sort of a dinosaur, but no, I no, no, don't you care. Will care soon. You will care soon. It doesn't do anything useful yet. Once it does something useful, you'll start paying attention. Well, I like machine learning. I just don't like uh, large language model AI. I, yeah, it's just kind of silly. Now, let's see, what should we talk about next? Uh, let's see, we did that one. Fusion, fuel of the future. Oh, okay. I'm you want to see a thing on fusion? I was eight years old. Okay, here you go, <clears throat> Skep. Uh, let's see, I have this filed under press X to doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Doodle to reality, world's first nuclear fusion-powered electric propulsion drive. Yeah, I don't think There so. it is, Skep. Uh -huh. There's a picture yeah, of it and everything. <laughs> oh, there's a, oh, wait a minute. I didn't know there was a picture of it. Yeah. Well, that, a concept that, that began everything. as a doodle at okay. a conference years ago is now becoming a reality. Yeah. Rockst Rocket Star Inc. has showcased its advanced nuclear-based propulsion technology called the Firestar Drive. It is said to be the world's first electric drive for spacecraft propulsion boosted by nuclear fusion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah, right. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that. And uh, moving on. So you said fusion, so I wanted to show you that. China landing on Mars. Um, well, I have one. So the... So the Mr. Fusion module goes somewhere in that model, right? Yeah, exactly. It plugs in yeah. and the power comes out. I got it. Garbage powered, Skip. Uh, yeah, it's, it's banana peel. Let's see. I've got two <laughs> biggish topics that we could talk about. Let me see. We can obviously only talk about one. Hmm. Do we want to talk about Joe Rogan related things or and it's better than it sounds, or do we want to talk about software do i have let's see who's in the chat let me tailor it toward who's in the chat who joe got? rogan joe rogan i would think based on who i've been talking with chat it joe rogan is you think I'm joe saying. rogan is the thing yeah. okay yeah so you guys are probably familiar with uh, andrew huberman or maybe yes. you are so there's huberman. all these people that sort of exist in the joe rogan sphere right and so people like comedians that he has on that are his regulars so uh tom segura uh, Tim Dillon, a bunch of those kinds of guys who go yeah. on. So he has a bunch of comedians that he's sort of pushed into podcast fame. And uh, he's also obviously very influential. But I've noticed recently that 
the volume of the rhetoric surrounding Joe Rogan seems to be increasing. And what I mean by that is the left loves to do this. It's like they don't like the orange man, so they make it very, very painful to be his lawyer or to work for him in any sort of way. Right. Right. So they start nipping away at the edges because what what kind of cult would you be if you didn't try to isolate your opponents? <laughs> Um, and so they've started going after Huberman. So maybe Huberman has a bunch of girlfriends. Maybe he's done something that he's not supposed to do. That seems like it's between Huberman and these women. None of my concern. But it's not just Huberman that they've sort of been going after. Uh, I also noticed this video from a guy, uh, Ryan Macbeth, who I normally kind of like. But let me just show you this short, because I, I feel like there's... A tide of things, when you look at them in total, you can kind of see a pattern. Let me just show you this other example. Okay. An interesting video popped up about Joe Rogan and the streamer Destiny. And Joe Rogan said... "It's so He's so ridiculous. He does yeah. a Wikipedia search and then just starts going after things like yeah. he's an expert. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to pause this because I don't want to get copy struck. Again, mm. I actually normally like Ryan's content. I think he's actually really good about his misinformation, disinformation stuff. And he's got some real knowledge about military systems. Okay. You know, maybe he's full of shit some of the time, whatever. But just throwing that out there. Never heard of him. People who live in glass houses, man. Joe Rogan is probably one of the biggest misinformation spreaders I've ever heard. Funny story, I actually stopped listening to Joe Rogan on February 6, 2023. I was getting an MRI for a labrum tear and the technician asked me, do you want to listen to music? And I said, no, but you, you can put on Joe Rogan. So he yeah, the, the, the gist of what he's talking about there is, you know, Joe Rogan is a source of disinformation. Well, in a time when everything was so tightly locked down because of the coof, right, and because of all the cancellations and stuff, Joe Rogan was one of the few high-profile people that were actually giving heterodox opinions any kind of airtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to live in a world that doesn't allow heterodox opinions to be put forward. And if that means that occasionally stuff that falls under the category of misinformation comes out of the Joe Rogan sphere, I don't care. Yeah. Um, I'm a proper grown-ass adult. I can decide for myself... Um, which stuff is bullshit and which stuff isn't. And because Joe Rogan has a lot of really weird, fringy people on. So what? You know, why are they suddenly going after Huberman? And there's a bunch of people throwing shade at a lot of the comedians. And I can't figure out if this is like a concerted behind the scenes psyop sort of thing, or if it's just that humans are just crabs in a bucket and we hate to see somebody succeed. And it reached a tipping point and now everybody's just going after Joe Rogan. Your thoughts? Oh. I haven't seen anybody going after Joe uh, on social media. I see it all the well, time. I'm going to yeah, subpoena yeah. your your YouTube he history, gets, Serenity. Yeah, he has, yeah. Uh, Rogan gets hit by every by a lot. But of But it really uh, seems to be more lately. Yeah, yeah well, it, it it definitely the volume has uh, uh, gone up. But you see him trending more, and there's a lot of negativity uh, directed his his way. But uh, I, I don't know. All this seems uh, much ado about nothing. I, I, I can't get too excited about this. Serenity, what do you think about this? I. The reason why Ryan Macbeth is doing what he's doing is because he's friends with Destiny, because he's hung out with Destiny more than once. Oh. So that's the reason why he's protecting Destiny, because they're friends. Ryan wants to be uh, one of the cool kids. I mean, yes. desperately. Uh, well, I mean, if you think Destiny's a cool kid, you're already lost. But anyway, no, yeah, um, yeah, that's I don't, a different problem. I don't trust Hubberman because he's gotten some information wrong, and I've seen Huberman. some people point at point out where he's gotten his info wrong. I don't trust anybody who sells supplements. I never have. I never will. Does he sell them? Does he sell supplements? Yeah, he does. Oh, yeah, 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 he does. He's shady as shit. This is not yeah, me trying to put you on, not me trying to put you on the spot, but just out of yeah. curiosity, do you remember? what information he you, you think he got wrong so i've seen a couple things from people i trust about like he well okay so there is a statistic going around about the whole like um over 50 percent of women will be single by 2030 that statistic has been misquoted by him by everybody the statistics like 41 percent mm -hmm. um he's done a couple other things I just don't like the guy because he does the supplement bullshit. 
And to me, the minute you start selling supplements, I do not give a fudge who the hell you are. If Rogan starts doing it, I will automatically start distrusting him. If you talk anything about BetterHelp, I do not trust you. Um, because yeah. BetterHelp is a shady ass company. I don't mm-hmm. know if he's talked about BetterHelp. I do mm-hmm. not know. So I'm not putting that on him. But it's the reason why I don't listen to Russell Brand, because Russell Brand has pushed mm-hmm. BetterHelp in the past. It's like if you're not gonna if you're gonna talk about mental health and not freaking bother to look into this crap, that's F you. Um I don't trust him. Well because you're it just seems a racist like, then. Yeah. Damn right. Um <laughs> but I I I don't give a damn who he fucks. As long as everyone's of sound mind and body, consenting age, and legally able to consent, I do not care. Um, He just seems like every other person, whether they're male, female, gay, straight, bi, whatever, who's gotten a lot of money and a lot of attention, who's using it to get as much as he can out of the barrel Mm -hmm. as he can before it all blows up. Um, With Rogan... I understand y'all are seeing it. I'm so used to people making the pot shot comment of, well, they've been on Joe Rogan, that unless it's a vitriolic 15-minute bitch moan, I don't listen to it because I'm like, I don't care. Rogan's allowed to do whatever the hell he wants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, um, absolutely. But I, it, yeah. it seems but the, the attacks about the people sort of in his sphere really seem to be ramping up. Um, that's the thing. Like, I, like the only the thing I've seen ramp up are people attacking Hassan Avi and um sorry Hassan, yeah yeah Hassan pike or Hassan abi whatever the hell you want to call him uh-huh. and destiny after destiny's terrible showcase with um jordan peterson, peterson. remember was, uh, uh joe rogan used to be a moon landing denier and he got in this yes. uh, this really terrible debate with that. phil plate the uh, the bad astronomer is that what he called himself bad yeah. astronomer and because phil is such a bad uh arguer or debater he actually lost, I mean, effectively in the court of public opinion, he lost a debate on a topic that is demonstrably true. How, how bad do you have to suck to lose that, that debate? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, much like Carl Benjamin can't debate to save his life either. It's like, yo, yeah, you've got a lot of interesting opinions, got all these people that like you, like your content, you're good at writing long form stuff. Fine, you, you cannot debate. Carl Benjamin can't debate. Neither can Phil Plate. That doesn't mean that Joe Rogan was right about the moon, obviously. Mm-hmm. But he's it, he's since come back and recanted, obviously, because he said, "Yeah, I was being an idiot." Um, I think I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson who smacked sense into him. I think is the one. Yeah, he's now, been smacked by I, a bunch of people. Well, it doesn't mean I agree. I don't like Neil deGrasse Tyson either because I think he's an arrogant prick. Yeah, but, but fake uh, Carl funny. Sagan. He says the nice things about you. Yeah, well, I'm sure he does. <laughs> It's all that Jew money. Anyway, a um, <gasps> little bit of Tim Well Hattie stuff is people like Rogan and his fear are quite vocal. They don't, I mean, they're you know, effectively untouchable. And mm-hmm. when they share such dangerous opinions like Biden's incompetent, Trump is the only answer, uh, you're going to get the, you're going to get the, the, the amount of ramp up you're seeing now because the oh, yeah. election season is already deep into full swing. Like it's, 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 it's going like, yeah. Now if they try to censor him directly, like trying to make the Spotify deal go away or any of that shit, they did try to do that. Oh, I know they did. And that was the reason why I stood with Rogan on that. Hell, I even stood with the Tate brothers when they tried to censor them. Cause I don't agree with it. Still think they're pieces of shit. They're creepy. Yes. They're really yeah. creepy. But I, I don't I, agree, I, but I don't agree with censorship because I, I honest to God believe that sunshine is the best medicine. You got to give enough people enough room I, to hang I, themselves. I stand for free it's, speech, but there are some, some of the people who happen to be on the side of free speech. I don't have to stand with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, well, keep, and it's like I don't like Huberman, but let the man talk. If people yeah. if it help people, go for it. Well, keep your keep your eyes yeah. open because well. I I kind of feel like there's a possibility that that there's a somewhat coordinated effort to whittle away at the edges of Joe Rogan's support to make it painful to be associated with him. And I just base this on on what I'm seeing in terms of the kind of heat that's being thrown at various people that sort of orbit him. Um, and I, I could be wrong. I mean, this is just my impression, just a tiny fish what? swimming around in an ocean of facts. And I just suddenly have noticed that there seems to be a lot of this kind of crap happening all at once. Um, 
And I just kind of wonder, because there's still people that are mad that, that the orange man won an election, and they, they're oh, yeah. willing to throw away anything and everything to make sure it never happens again. And yeah, uh, no. that's a mistake. Uh, I have no yep. problem. You know, he'll have, like, the ancient... Rogan will have the ancient aliens guy on. That's a Graham Hancock. Yeah. Now, I don't agree with Graham Hancock, but he's still an interesting guy. Let him have the uh, the lizard guy. What's his name? Um, the English the guy. guy. The, the one who thinks that people are secretly reptiles, like in the royal family and oh, stuff. Oh, oh, I don't... Why can I not English remember his or name? Australian or... He's English. Yeah. yeah Why I can know. I not remember his name? I It'll probably idea. be in chat if I go look. Yeah. Yeah, I'm of the same, same mind. What are we talking about? As much of a piece of shit, I think, people like Chink, Chunky Yogurt are... The lizard reptilian I, conspiracy guy. I will always land on the side of free speech even for people like him and you know, on a personal note it's hilarious to laugh at retarded people i'm sorry i do it nice. i find it amusing yeah yeah i um god why can i not remember his name but uh he actually the guy the lizard conspiracy guy <laughs> you know yeah. You know. Why can I not remember his name? Anyway, he did a, a, a interview thing with Carl Pilkington one time. Now that's oh fun. <laughs> Michael Barkin? No. This makes me sad. My brain's not working very well. It'll come to me yeah. later. Um, so Huber, Huberman. David Icke? Yeah, David Icke. Yeah. Dave, oh, David. okay. Yeah, so... Crazy uh, lizard guy. I mean, what's so bad about having heterodox stuff? I mean, if the flat earthers want to go on YouTube and make asses out of themselves, I don't care. I'm not particularly afraid of disinformation. What I'm afraid of is people claiming that things are facts, that demonstrably yes. aren't facts. I mean, deliberate misinformation as opposed right. to heterodox opinions. Um, it's sort of like when you sell a product, if the government maybe is in a good position to smack people who make claims about merchandise that aren't true, yeah. you know, and those kinds of things are actionable legally. We want commerce to yeah. work well. If, you know, if you say you're going to deliver uh, a metric ton of grade A maple syrup and you ship a metric ton of grade B, which doesn't necessarily mean it's worse, by the way, um, you know, that's so an issue. Tell the difference. Yeah. People can't tell the difference yeah. anyway. Ike so apparently, uh, David Ike. David Ike thinks he's the son of God. Does he? Yeah, he's a crazy person. He's a crazy he's, person. He's just a full-on certifiable. All right. I'm not, not even I'm an, not afraid of David Ike it's though. Not even oh, yeah, an I'm, act I'm, like I'm, you know. Just, Alex I was making sure it sometimes does, but he's a lol cow. Was, yeah, yeah, I was making sure that it was the right person because I actually the, the spelling of the last name I've seen a lot of. Yeah. And David's a fairly common name, so I'm making sure I'm looking at the right person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. <it's, laughs> Totally, like, totally I mean, legit. Like, like I said, Hoverman's a sleazeball, if that's what he actually did to those women. Whether it happened or not, I don't know, because people will make shit up all the time. I, beyond that, sleazeballs have the right to talk, too. I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. Sleazeballs can be fun. Yeah, let sleazeballs be sleazeballs. Exactly. Yeah. Although, the, the, like, I do, like the, the one thing I do have to say is this. The funniest meme I've seen in a while was literally, I don't know who Hoverman was talking to. It was an older dude. And it was an older dude talking about how yeah. men mm -hmm. have a hard time ha carrying on six relationships. And it, it's like, it's playing the, I, it, it's the um, rest of development music when it turns and looks at Hoverman and you see Hoverman almost freeze. <laughs> Talk about funny. keeping up six relationships <laughs> with women. And it was the funniest fucking thing. Yeah, changing this like, subject. Yeah, Carl Pilkington's Satisfied Fool, he did actually sit down with David Icke for an episode. Interesting. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. I'd much rather there be dialogue. And it looks like Jermaine Greer was in it too. Wow. Okay. Cool. Jermaine cool. Greer. Yeah. Where'd old school, old timey feminist from the UK. Oh, I know. Oh, I remember. Yeah, she was uh, uh, from Australia. Oh, she's from Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jermaine I guess Greer she is. Australian feminist. Yep. <laughs> I read her stuff back in college. <laughs> back in 1971. All right. Well. I kind of want to make a, uh, well, no, we don't want to, I don't want to throw this away. Let's see, what can we do in the remaining however many minutes we have? Actually, we don't have any remaining minutes. <laughs> yeah, we've, yeah, you know, yeah, we're kind of at the end. Of the we've road. gone, we've gone two hours. So uh, I think we can just take, oh, well, we have to have some, 
some little thing here. We'll do a couple of things. So, um, how about this? Dolphin recorded speaking porpoise in Incredible Worlds first. You know how we like to follow Yay. creepy uh, dolphins Darwin. and record their various squeaks and squawks Darwin's. to figure out what's going on? Yeah. Well, they recorded a dolphin making little dolphin noises, but when they listen to it, it's like, wait a second, this dolphin is speaking, speaking porpoise. It's not making dolphin noises. It's making porpoise noises. Porpoise. Yeah, Kyle. Kylie. I'm sorry, Kylie, poipus. a wild dolphin in Scotland, has been was seen chatting with her adopted family of harbor porpoises in their language uh, back in 2022, uh, oh, representing oh, a remarkable dolphin. world first in cross species communication. Scottish. That explains everything. After 14 Worst. years away from her species, the uh, let's see, Kyle, Kylie had spent so much time around porpoises that she even learned to sound like them. Her vocalizations include high-pitched click bursts associated with uh, porpoise instead of whistles and pulses commonly associated with dolphins. The oh cross-species cross communication between Kylie and her porpoise pals is the subject of a paper titled, I beg your pardon, acoustic behavior of a solitary common dolphin who interacts with harbor porpoises. Oh, that's a, I like, that's a cute that's name. I like awesome. that name. Yeah, this is great. This is amazing. This is news amazing. I can yeah. use. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is the level of. Uh, yeah. This is an excellent balance answer. So we feel good now? <laughs> yes. Now I'm happy. Yeah. Now end the yeah, show. Don't, don't, in. don't. Now let's quit. Back. Let's don't quit while we're ahead. <laughs> this has uh, been your Minions of the Zoo for Saturday. Thank you, panel. Thank you, chat. Thanks uh, for having 